Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Bean podcast channel. My name is Kayleen and I'm your host and today I'm bringing you a little bit of a mini, mini episode for a podcast. Um, I did want to share a couple of things with you. I have one work in progress that I wanted to share that I just started. I also have a new product that's going into the shop that I'm very excited to share with you and share the backstory behind it. Um, and also I wanted to answer some of the unanswered questions from last week's podcast or last podcast that I filmed, which was a couple weeks ago, I think. I think. I don't know. So, uh, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is a channel that's centered around knitting, crochet, spinning, mostly yarn dyeing, and pretty much just doing crafty things and sharing those things with you. Um, I'm Kayleen, and I am the owner and principal fiber artist behind uh, Little Bean Crochet on Etsy, and my website is www.littlebeanlovesyarn.com. Uh, it's my hand-dyed yarn line, and I just come here to share things with you guys. So if you're into that and you'd like to subscribe, you can hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell icon so you get notified when I upload a new video. So let us just get into everything. Um, I apologize for any road noise you might hear. I've moved into my living room today to film because the lighting is so beautiful uh, and I have the window open next to me. So, you know, eh, you might hear something, but um, let me show you what I've been working on. I haven't dyed any new yarn this week. It's been quite busy. It is the end of the school year for my daughter. We're getting ramped up for summer camp starting in a couple of weeks. And if you watched last week's our last episode of the podcast, you'll know that we found a program for my son so that he can start attending um, this summer, which is really exciting and I'm so hopeful and so excited that everything will work out. He has really severe food allergies, so we we're very apprehensive about sending him anywhere, so I'm very excited uh, for him to start that. And that also starts next week. So we are just kind of gearing up for the summer, making plans, planning trips. Um, and doing all of those things. So I haven't had a lot of time to dedicate to dyeing this week. I do have a wholesale order in my queue right now to start dyeing at the end of this week. And um, in terms of anything, any other dyeing, I have not built up my queue yet. So if you have a colorway that you'd like to see coming up in the next shop update, please definitely leave a comment down below. You can see all of my colorways on my website and I'll leave a link up here in the iCard for you. Um, if there's a colorway you want to see, I'm happy to add it to the queue. Right now my queue is empty, so um, let me know. Anyway, okay, so on to my work in progress. It's in this little bag over here to my side. And it is a pair of socks. So last week I was doing some cranking on my sock machine. I had set a couple of skeins aside to do sock emergency kits. So these were from a dye up probably a few months ago, maybe around the start of the new year. And I think I, I set these aside right after the first wave of those went live in the shop. Uh, and so I decided to start knitting some socks and uh, fix my ribbing. So I was having a lot of trouble doing machine ribbing on my machine. I haven't spent a lot of time practicing or troubleshooting and I just took, you know, any stitches that fell off the river or anything kind of in stride and just fix them and move on. I just didn't take the time to troubleshoot and I think I found my problem. So I was able to knit a few pairs of socks. Now these are a shorty pair where I used the leftover yarn from the taller socks that I made, but this is the colorway Sister Use Your Pain, which is mauve and brown and navy and some red speckles. And then this is the colorway Potion of Dreamless Sleep, which is one of my favorite colorways that I've ever dyed. Uh, but it's pretty speckled, mostly, you know, variegated. It has somewhat of a regular repeat, but it's not, you know, it really shows up in socks because you're knitting on such a small scale here. But um, everything, it's teals and purples and blues. It, it's pretty much like a teal and purple colorway um, of varying shades. There might be some gray or black in there as well. But so I started a really super shorty pair for myself. 
selfish knitting uh, and I just cast on the toes here so I picked up all the stitches uh, for those who don't know who haven't been following along for too long um, I do prefer to knit my socks two at a time whether I've crunched the bodies of the socks or I'm hand knitting the bodies of the socks I always do them in two at a time uh, I learned from Mina Phillips she has a great two at a time sock tutorial which I'll leave her channel up here um, she's so wonderfully nice and kind and is a great designer and I really do support her podcast so and if you want to check her out she's up there but she has a great two at a time sock tutorial that I followed and I just I, it just clicked for me and it solved my starting but not finishing things uh, issue if I finish a sock I'm more likely to have one one sock sock island <laughs> I don't know how to call it one sock syndrome um, so I just started the toes here I knit my socks at 60 stitches right around eight stitches per inch and that is how I crank them as well and these are two um, ribbed cuffs that are one by one ribbing and it's a hung hem so it's a little bit thicker and cushier at the top here uh, and I like that in my sock it, I feel like it gives more grip so anyway so that's my socks I'm knitting these on size one these are Addy Turbo Rockets they're 47 inch uh, circulars so hopefully that's all the information uh, I apologize for also the changing light it is quite nice in here today so I didn't want to like put on the bright white light and all that so anyway work in progress trying to you know have a small project for the playground um, because my shawls are too big and too too intensive for me to focus on while I'm watching the kids at the playground so there is that uh, okay so then the next thing that I wanted to do was talk about this bag here if you follow me on Instagram, um, you would have seen my post yesterday and today, today is Thursday, that I just released some tote bags into the shop. Now these tote bags have kind of been in the planning for quite some time. Um, I try not to talk about plans for projects just in case they don't work out or they aren't exactly what I had envisioned, um, but I, I really wanted to do something that was going to show you the mission of my yarn dyeing business and really kind of hit it home for some folks that might not know me personally or might not watch the podcast and get to know me on this sort of level. Um, and I wanted it to be something that anyone could use, whether you are actively knitting or not, or crocheting or not, or you're a quilter or a weaver or a spinner, um, that if you're in the fiber arts community that you would understand what I'm about and what I'm trying to trying to do and trying to say um, I do I've opened up about this on the podcast before but I do struggle a bit with um, depression and uh, and it's been more so since my children were born and some situational things that were going on and hormonal things that are going on so um, you know, there have been a lot of times in the last, especially two years, that I've really, really struggled. And I really try, I've always tried to live my life with intent and try to live my life with a purpose and helping other people and also always with kindness at the center of everything. Um, I'm a person who takes on a lot when it comes to work and I also take on a lot emotionally when it comes to my friends, my family, and I really try to be a support system for them. And after a while, you know, things wear down and you have to remember to take care of yourself. It's the most important thing. But fiber arts, generally crocheting for a majority of my life, now knitting and spinning and sock knitting and shawl knitting and dyeing yarn, it's been cathartic and it's been therapeutic. And I really do, live my life by you can only take things one step at a time and for me one stitch at a time you know we are building our lives and growing as humans and learning and no one is perfect and you can't hold yourself to a, a, an unreasonable standard and when you're feeling really down you're comparing yourself to others you know you make a mistake or something is going completely wrong or it's in a really tragic or sad way you know what do you do in those situations and I always live my life with intent and in my business I try to put that forward as well that 
you shouldn't be afraid to ask for help and you shouldn't be afraid to show kindness to other people even if they wouldn't show you kindness in return because I really do believe that you get what you give in this life. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Oh, don't cry. Okay. And I'm sorry. For me, I I try not to show this much emotion on the podcast because it's very um, vulnerable. But I really do believe that even though you might feel like there's not a way to move out of like whatever you're feeling, if you're feeling something incredibly suffocating or sad or anger, that there's always a way to move past it and that you can live your life with intent to move past it, even if it's really difficult. And sometimes we do unravel and we do let ourselves be in it and we're, you know, I don't know how to say what I want to say. You know, it's okay sometimes to feel that way and to kind of let yourself go, but you have to know that there are people to help you and to be to be with you and to try and lift you up and show you how to work past certain things in your life and um i i feel like each day is a new day to start again and i really remind myself of that especially when i'm having a hard time or feeling down about myself or things that are going on and so i i choose instead of to unravel my life and just wallow I try to make it a, a point to move on and to um, pick myself up and learn from a mistake or learn from a, a point in my life where that I might not see the full picture yet and I feel like the analogy is really there for for being a, a fiber artist where you take things one stitch at a time and each moment in your life is part of the fabric in the final piece of what your life is like. How do you want to live it and how do you want to see the world when you're gone? And for me, I like to be intentional and I like to find joy in those moments. And I like, even if I'm, you know, feeling very hopeless. So I, I wanted to show that through this bag and um, that's pretty much the message behind it. So here it is. So it says, find joy in the little stitches of life no matter how many you drop. That it doesn't matter how many mistakes you have in your life or points that don't quite work out. It's a way that you can change the pattern and change what you see in yourself and other people and that you should find joy in those moments and in those mistakes and learn from them. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna start crying. Um, and so that's how I live my life and how I run my business and I wanted it to be somewhere and I wanted it to be on something that folks could use and look at it and remind themselves that each day is a new day and each stitch in our lives is just part of a larger picture and that there's no there's no reason to give up even if you feel like you should so anyway that's it that's that's all it is so that's the bag mm. Don't cry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I know. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to do today was to answer some more of the questions. I did not get to all the questions that were asked of me um, in the last podcast. And so I did want to take some time. I have them on my laptop right here. So I'm going to pull up my laptop and answer some questions. So on Instagram, I had some questions from fog and pine uh, and the questions were what is one crochet and knit project that you've been hesitant to try or perhaps one you frogged and given up on two what is your dream project three are you a music fan and if so what do you enjoy so one project that I have not yet tried that I do want to try is to knit myself a sweater and the reason I haven't tried that is because of my proportions. So um, I am an hourglass type figure and I always am no matter which, how heavy I am or how light I am, um, no matter what size my body is, it is always the same shape. So I am 
busty, I have a small waist, and I have very wide hips. And so any sweater that I make is going to have to do adjustments. And I'm very nervous about doing adjustments for myself because I'm afraid that all the work that I put in, I won't be able to wear it. And if for those who don't know, um, my chest is extremely large. It is naturally this large. It's always been this large. Well, it's gotten larger since I've had kids. But generally speaking, I am larger than a D cup. I will not give you my exact measurements, but I I am very much larger than a D cup. And I feel like, you know, B, C, D, those are all in the letters we know and love. But when you go into G's or H's or I's, then you kind of get into like this weird zone. So a lot of sweater patterns, um, when you're looking at the measurements of the sweater, I would have to knit like an XL or a double XL large sweater, but then it would be like way too large on my waist. Anyway, um, so, and I also like things to be longer. Putting things longer is not that bad. So I was interested in trying something like this Vigue sweater that's on my bucket list, bucket list, on my list to knit. Um, I really liked the Sunset Highway sweater as well, but I'm really loving this Vigue because it has a little bit of texture in it, and it also has the lace detailing, and I really like to have detailing up here by my shoulders. So, um, that's something that I was interested in. Um, I've not frogged too many things. I've had a lot of things go to the graveyard a little bit, where I'm just like, oh, I'll put it down and I'll pick it up later. Uh, one of the things I did frog was um, a shawl. I think it was last year. I ended up frogging it or just tossing it out. It was, I knitted on the wrong size needles and now I can't even remember what it was. If I remember what it is, I'll put it on the screen, but there's not been many things like that because when I go into a project, I'm like, I'm going to finish this project no matter what it is. So, um, And then music. I love all kinds of music. I'm not really a fan of country music, and that's probably the only style that I don't like. I do not really like American country music, hardly at all. Um, I do enjoy some bluegrass. I do enjoy some more, like, kind of like deep south, like, kind of Creole sounding like down in Louisiana <laughs> type music. Um, generally, I will listen to anything. I also don't enjoy too much, too much like super pop music, but it's more that I don't like the sound of it versus anything else. As long as someone can sing really well, I love it. Uh, I really love musicals. Um, you know how when some people talk about like ASMR, and you get like the tingles in your head and you're, you get goosebumps, like music does that to me. Like really well sung music with strong vocals, like I get chills every single time I listen to music. So it's really fun and therapeutic and I really enjoy listening to it. I really love Sia. If I'm going on like a more pop vibe, I love Sia. She's a brilliant singer. Uh, I also really like Adele. Celine Dion, my original my original girl. Um, I don't know. I really love John Legend. I love the Beatles. Beatles, I grew up on the Beatles and I will listen to them till the day I die. I love them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like everything. I love musical theater. I love classical music. I am a flautist. I play the flute and I grew up listening to it and playing it and I enjoy it as well. So, All right, so the next question comes from here. Raven Diva 77 what are your goals business-wise and what would you like to achieve next year and would you consider doing an advent calendar? Um, yes, of course. Uh, my goals for the coming year are a little bit flexible only because I'm not entirely sure, I wasn't sure how things were going to work out with my son. Uh, I'm a one-woman show. I'm the only one who dyes yarn in this house and I'm the only one who films this podcast and no one helps me with it but me. <laughs> um, and I take care of the kids and maintain the house and do all of these wonderful things. And so my business goals this year are really to focus on growth and also being more mindful on social media and posting more on social media and really kind of being more consistent with podcasting and all of that. The door is making a weird noise. It's making a weird noise. Okay. 
sounds like there's a ghost going into my house, but it is literally from the wind. Um, so th that's really my goal, is really to try and grow my business more and to take advantage of the time that I'm going to be afforded. Tucker's going to be in school, school, two days a week, and my daughter will be in summer camp all summer, and then she's going to be in school four, four days a week next year. And so I will have two full, like, eight-hour days without children. So I will have so much more time than what I have now to film and to die and to live stream and do all of those things and so I really do want to focus on doing that more and then in terms of an advent calendar of course I would love to do an advent calendar um, but it would just depend on what happens over this summer and the planning that I can do ahead of time uh, coming into the fall and how I would just plan it all out and try and divide my time appropriately. It just depends on my workload. So um, I would love to do that. So if you want to see that, give this video a thumbs up um, so I know. Okay, so let us see here. And then I had a few more questions that are a little bit quicker. Ashley asked on Facebook, um, do you find dyeing therapeutic or work? Do you have a name for a colorway before or after you dye something new? Do you ever get sick of a colorway because you've had to dye it so much? And what is your current favorite colorway? So, actually, hello, by the way. Um, and I do find it therapeutic. The dyeing part is therapeutic. Everything else is work. <laughs> so the small amount of time that I either get to film or edit or do a stream or a dye, those things are really fun. And then the time that I have to spend editing and labeling and packaging and shipping and drying and processing and rescaining and all of that, that's all work. <laughs> no, really, it is fun. Um, I do enjoy it. Um, and then in terms of colorway inspirations and names, some it's probably 50-50. If I'm going into it and I'm just going to have fun with color, I'll just pick colors that I feel like using in diet and then name it afterward. Uh, sometimes I do go in with concept, so when I do certain series of things, like the trees series where I did uh, Wig and Tree, Elder Tree, and Whomping Willow, those were preconceived color palettes, names, inspirations, all of that. When I did the Marauders, so I did uh, Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs, those were also conceptualized as a set. Um, so <clears throat> sometimes I do go into it before with an idea, but most of the time I'm just dying and trying to have fun, and then I'll name the colorway after. Um, do I get sick of the colorway? Yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I think anybody does. Uh, whether you're a musician and you're playing the same song a thousand times a day, or you are an artist and you're painting or printing out the same print uh, a thousand times a day, or you're an indie dyer and you're dyeing the same colorway of yarn for a pre-order or for a kit or because it's just super popular, of course. Uh, it just becomes monotonous after a while and you're like, oh my goodness, I'd just like to dye something else. Um, but you know, it just comes with the territory, I suppose. And then, uh, what is my favorite current colorway? Mm. <laughs> you're asking me to pick my favorite child. That's what you're asking me right now. Um, I really love earthy tones, and I've, I'm liking the brights that I've been dying lately. If you haven't checked them out in the shop, there's some in there um, that are more uh, vibrant. <laughs> uh, not in my comfort zone, but I really love, like, blues and sage and browns and just like all these earthy colors that you can just they just ooh, they just all go together I mean I love prongs and I get very sick of dying prongs but it is one of my most popular colorways it is one of my most favorite colorways um and I really love ooh, his mother's eyes oh it's so subtle and beautiful and Luna I love Luna as well she's a surprising colorway so anyway so that's the end of <laughs> Those are the end of the questions, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you have questions for me, please do leave them in the comment section down below, and perhaps you will hear your question be answered on the next podcast. I always love to answer what you want to know within reason. I mean, you can ask me anything I really want to, and that's fine. Um, anyway, so I hope you did enjoy this podcast. I know it's a little bit shorter. I hopefully, you know. It got you through a little time. I'm sorry for crying a little bit, but you know, things, I'm a very emotional person and things really touch me and it's very important. So anyway, um, I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you in my next video. Bye.